The real question is, what can you run in the fish room? Hey, welcome to another new video of Ben Wyobi. So, today we're going to talk about that 800 watt inverter. Uh, this power inverter is actually getting released soon in Canada. It was just on the website. Uh, we're uh, the 1st of December right now. It just says really soon. It doesn't give a specific date or the price that they're going to charge here. But uh, it's coming, you guys. Uh, for my friend in the States, I know you guys have been testing this already. Uh, here we don't have it yet, so I was I had to pry a little bit of hands there to get my myself one of those to test it. And then, uh, yeah, I'll show you. Uh, you know, most people will show you, yeah, I do a fan, a laptop, all that stuff. But uh, I'll show you other stuff that this can do. So I got the unboxing video that I'm going to link on the top corner there. Uh, and then I show you on the video, I tested all those function here, the 120, 300, 800. So you can go watch that into that uh, unboxing video. Uh, yeah, for this video here, uh, what we're going to do is actually test uh, for if you're stuck and you're going to cook and so let's say you wanted to do some rice and then all of a sudden the power goes out. Oh, I forgot to press play again for the second thing of water. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're going to do some rice there. The power went out. Oh no, what do you do? Well, first of all, it's probably the middle of the night. So turn this on and put your light on so you can see what you're doing. Except that we don't see that good in the screen when this is shining on us. Okay, so a right, unit like this is 450 watt. So obviously we cannot use this and I'm not going to bring that to the car anyway. Uh, the battery just give us 300 watt so it's not good enough. So we'll have to go with a car battery or lead acid battery. There's a dog here, his name is Chase. So we can plug into her battery here. So that's actually my bolt battery. I have it on trickle charge in the garage for the winter. Okay, so now it's still showing 300. We're gonna take that battery out here on the side. That's showing that there's an error. Okay, now it's detecting it. I don't know if you can see that. The battery is 12.7 volt. It detects that we're on a lead acid battery. So it knows we can give it 800 watt. So now we're gonna take a cord here, plug this in the unit. So we have this plug into the unit, and uh, now it's just keeping it warm. Now we can start cooking our rice. The power inverter fan kicked on. And yeah, no problem. Now, I don't know if it would last, like, well, it should last long enough because that's a car battery, but, so, uh, so yeah, it should last long enough for you to be able to cook all of your rice. Can you hear it starting to pop and stuff like that? So here the LED screen goes out if you don't press the button or something like that just to save some power here. We can put it back on if we want to. Well, we can cook our rice, so what else can we heat with that thing? Well, maybe you have to prepare some food. Okay, so we're on the 4 amp hour battery. Turn it on. Okay, four amp power battery. Should tell me the voltage here. Anyway, we're gonna try the blender with this thing. So yeah, no problem. 
and then uh, yeah. So it's actually. So I need thing I didn't know. I did that by accident, I guess, by pressing the button for a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see that in the screen. It says zero VV. Well, it's actually a W here, and it tells me how many amps this thing is using. So it's gonna be a bit loud for the phone there, but uh, yeah, let's test that with the blender. So I'm gonna put it on. So that's pretty cool to know. Yeah, so if you just, okay, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so now we're in watt. If I press it once, I go back to volt. If I press it again, I go back to watt. So that's a pretty interesting feature. So yeah, so now you can prepare your food. The blender works. So we're done blending our food. Now we're gonna cook it. So we're still on the 4 amp power battery, the lead acid battery is not connected. So what I find out when I was looking for stuff to test is that a slow cooker is actually only, well this one in particular anyway, it's only 250 watt. So 250-275 watt. So we should be able to run everything with that 4 amp power battery. So we're already on the 4 amp hour battery. This is plugged in. I'm going to power up the unit. I just have to press program for a second. So 4 hours. And then enter. It's cooking on high. Let's just make sure that it's working here. Let's go back to your... Uh, what's here to see if it's taking anything oh, now it's showing that it's cooking and it is using 250 watt 255 watt so yeah with your 4 amp power battery and that uh, 800 watt power inverter you can run your slow cooker for four hours, no problem. Now, I don't know if the four amp hour battery would be able to do four hours, but that'd be pretty cool to do a test like that and find out, eh? Yeah, just 254 watts. So with this, uh, inverter here we'll see if we can power up the whole entertainment system so I got that's my power bar here that everything is plugged in underneath here so now that you can see the LED on the TV is not on I'm gonna press power here LED on the TV should light up there you go should have led on the power bar too. Yeah, led on the power bar too. The TV's turning on. Yep, turn on so you can watch all your shows and your movies. so you can watch all your shows and your movies this will plug into the side if you are using that battery so we would have 300 watts so it could pretty much run everything except the heater but now I want to run everything including the heater so I want the whole 800 watts so this tank here I got a 500 watt heater in it so we're gonna turn this on so to get the 800 Wet. Now you need to 
plug it in. This is my bolt battery, actually, that I keep on trickle charge. I got two. I got lots of batteries around here. First, I'm a mechanic. The, the other thing is I got lots of toys. So, uh, anyway, and I never, I never want to get stuck not being able to do something. So, I always have tons of backup of everything, including for the fish tanks. So, anyway, so I got the battery here. So we're going to be able to run both canister, the heater, the um, wave maker, everything with this. And that's going to tell us right here. So I'm powering this up right now. So it's green. So I heard my canister filter going. So I can see here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but underneath there's a little bit of bubble underneath. This is where I keep my photo plant. Uh, poto plants uh, the fish will eat the roots if they were in the water so anyway that's another video here i got that already filmed but i can do a new one because the plants are getting huge um so i got that onto a window planter so <clears throat> anyway so i can see the air bubble underneath so i know my wave makers are pushing i get some on each side there they're both pushing you can see the heater going so it's this little thing here is pretty neat too because now I'm seeing I don't know if you guys can see that on camera here all the numbers so 12.4 and uh, that's the voltage from uh, the battery here but if I press again on it 37 so it's actually using 37 wet, uh, wet right now to do everything Oh, you know why? It's because actually I get my other canister mm -hmm. plug in directly to the wall. That's why. But anyway, like that would have just been another like 20 something. So I guess now the ether is must not be going because yeah, the light is not on on the hangboard. I uh, get another video about this too. Uh, you can check out. And so we'll force this in. There's a little button here I was trying to force the ether to go on but anyway even if the ether was on that would have been 500 watt right so 500 watt plus or 36 that we have right now to run the canister and the wave maker like that's nothing not even close to the 800 so anyway you can run a fish tank like that no problem with this thing the real question is, what can you run in the fish room? We're in my basement, so we'll do the test with that 800 watt inverter. Now don't freak out. If you want to see more of this, you have to go on my Ben African Cichlids channel, all right? So here we go. So that's our little fish room here. So I want to test to see if there's a power voltage. What can I do to save this room here? There's a, that's a breeding, fish breeding going on in here. So we don't want to lose everything. And it happened before that we lost lots of stuff during power voltage. Uh, sorry, the light is not super bright here. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just use the YOB shot light there you go so yeah we're gonna test that uh, the diverter here let's see if I can run the fish room of course when I say run the fish room I'm not going to run any of the eaters uh, there's fish room is not organized or set up to be energy efficient so I don't have just like some of the people out there like one huge air pump that runs all the filtration uh, here we have little uh, hang on the back filter just because the fish are super dirty so uh, and they're African cichlids uh, we feed them a lot so they eat a lot they poop a lot so if I just do sponge filter all the tanks are gonna be nasty every week so uh, to fix that then I just have hang on the back filter you can just swap the filter out of there the sponge out of there clean it pretty quick and then uh, yeah anyway back to the video here I'm getting a little bit 
<laughs> and it's a little bit tough track here. So we're gonna see what we can run in here. Okay, so I turned off the power from the breaker into the fish room. Uh, the fish room is on two system because I have too many plugs in here. So to stay uh, by law, then I had to build two systems. So the lights and half of the plug are on one system and then the other half of the plug are on another system in here. Um, so we'll have the power inverter ready to go. And uh, yeah, let's fire it up and see what happens. So the way I got that connected now, it's uh, it's not turned on right now, but the way I have that connected with that extension here, I got that made for when I use my uh, gas generator. But, uh, so I got mail in at both ends of that extension here, and I just plug into the wall. The system is protected right now because the breaker is off anyway, so we're safe to press the button. We're not going to burn anything down. So we're gonna press the button here. So this side, that should power up those tanks here. And then after that, we'll power up the other half of the fish room for those side. So we'll press the button, turn it on. Oop, a little bit longer. I think there's still a heater going in there because uh, it, uh, it's sucking up 510 uh, hemp right now. Uh, 10 watt, 510 watt. So must still have a heater going in there because that should not be using this much power right now. Uh, the, most of the heater in here are anywhere from like 50 to 250 watt so that will that would cause it anyway so yeah I'm able to run this part of the fish room here no problem so now we're gonna stop uh, this and connect on the other side and then we'll come back and power it up and see what happened on the other side so everything is dark again we got our extension Connect it on the other side of the fish room. Okay, that should power up all of those tanks on this side. Press the button here. Yeah, so those tanks are fired up. And also the LED light now. So yeah, and this side is actually sucking, how much? 580 watt. Now on this side, I didn't disconnect any of the heater. So I probably have a heater going still in there somewhere. But anyway, I was just uh, a quick test there to show you, you know, what you can do with that uh, power inverter. I know that it might not relate to what everybody have at home, but uh, gives you a good idea. So for me to run this fish room here, I probably would need a second one. Uh, and uh, But what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna organize my stuff a little bit better so that I can just run like either filter on one power bar or air pump on one power bar and stuff. and the eater I can if I can have them all connected to one power bar or just a couple then I can just disconnect them quickly so anyway there's some work to do to organize my stuff so I can work it out like this on here but anyway um, yeah it gives you a good idea of what the inverter are able to do uh, hopefully that video is useful and informative and uh, I'll see you in the next video